From the very first, explorers of the frozen continent have found it's not just the continent that's frozen. Miles of sea ice encircles Antarctica. It stopped many ships, like Ernest Shackleton's, ever reaching the continent itself. Only for a few weeks late summer does the sea ice break up and free the harbour at Mawson, Australia's oldest research base. Only then can you unload essential fuel and heavy cargo. By March, sea ice is again closing Mawson Harbour. Resupply becomes inefficient, then impossible. This is the first Australian icebreaker, the Aurora Australis. It will, it's hoped, get through the ice barrier early in the summer, where so many others have failed, and so extend the too brief Antarctic supply season. If you're going to have an Antarctic research program, you need to be confident you can resupply it. On this voyage, which is the Aurora Australis's second only to Antarctica, the captain is going to try to break right into Mawson Harbour through over a metre of sea ice. If he succeeds in doing so, the Aurora Australis will be the first vessel to have reached Mawson so early in the season. Put to the test will be the Australis's reinforced bow designed to cut and slice, rather than crush, ice up to 1.2 metres thick. That's not much by international ice-breaking standards, but in a cost-benefit analysis, it was considered sufficient for Australia's needs. Importantly, with our strong environmental stance on Antarctica, the ship has no fuel tanks in its outer hull, making an oil spill, even in the event of an accident, unlikely. Four of the 5,000 kilometres to Antarctica are through the stormy southern latitudes, the roaring 40s and furious 50s. So the Australis was designed and equipped not just to break ice, but to stay remarkably stable in swells that often exceed five metres. That's important because there's a whole array of laboratories aboard, for everything from oceanographers to marine biologists. Here we've got the ship to take them down there in comfort and also uh, so they can work on the way down there. Their time's not wasted. As we cross the Antarctic Circle at 66 degrees south, other science efforts aboard are also gearing up. Antarctic picture over there such as the hourly survey of Southern Ocean seabirds. Ah, three more Antarctic petrels. Are they new ones or have they yes, gone around some? So that's about seven Antarctic petrels and an emperor, penguin, a couple of snow petrels, Cape petrel and a southern fulmar. And that's just in the ten minutes of this hour that we've been watching. Oh, well, that's pretty good, isn't it? Not bad. The ice grows thicker but it's still what's known as pack ice, ice that's been broken up. The single solid ice front, the fast ice, is not far off. Oh, the VLB Mawson, the VLB Mawson. This is Aurora Australis on 5400. Uh, Roger, we took some ice conditions for you uh, a day or two ago. Ice thickness in Kister Strait is one decimal two metres. In the harbour, a one decimal we arrive at the fast ice edge in early December 1990. A corridor called Iceberg Alley leads directly south to Mawson. This is where the real ice breaking begins and almost immediately our speed is cut from the 13 knots in open sea to less than one knot. We're now 13 days out from Hobart, deep into the fast ice. That's the solid ice that this early in the summer extends 60 kilometres from the coast. The ice here is about 1.2 to 1.4 metres thick. That's slightly above the official capabilities of the ship. But on top of that, there's a further half a metre of claggy snow. So, as you can see, the Australis is finding the going pretty slow. So begins 12 hours of ramming the snow-covered ice. With each run, we make only a ship-length's progress, around 100 metres. 
Then it's a cumbersome reverse and reposition. It's kind of like uh, break ice through a jam sandwich. It's very, very sticky on the top of the ice and it absorbs a lot of the power from the engines. Constantly it slows it up a bit, so we're having to do a bit of backing and ramming where normally we just carry on. We have to uh, go through this neck of the woods here and as long as it snows on top of the ice, it'll slow us up. From the air, the problem becomes clear. The ship cuts easily through the channel it's already broken, but once it starts breaking fresh ice, snow adheres right along the hull. The Australis has made just 15 kilometres through the fast ice after 12 hours and huge amounts of diesel. The ice-breaking attempt is abandoned. The ice barrier and the infamous Antarctic conditions, known as the A-factor, have won again. Still, the Antarctic Division doesn't count the Australis a failure. They'll reserve judgment on their new icebreaker for a fairer test. But offloading must now be done by chopper. Hey, David, get that one back there. Okay, now, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. For the next four days, the three helicopters aboard run a constant taxi shuttle the last 60 kilometres into Mawson, ferrying expeditioners, fresh food, and all the cargo their holds can carry. The Australis turns back to the fast ice edge. Still aboard is some equipment and fuel that will go right back to Hobart before being brought south all over again on a voyage later in the summer, when the sea ice will have briefly released its grip on our Antarctic bases.